We start our show with Assemblymember Yulin Nu. She became the first Asian American to represent Manhattan and Chinatown. I sat down with her recently to talk about her freshman year in office and her plans for the future. When you walk into Yulin Nu's downtown Manhattan office, you might think you walked into a cool tech startup. Okay, well, we chose, right? There was yeah. like one with Scott at Pride. But her staff, mostly young and, yes, hip, are actually all about public service. And their boss has been quite busy since taking public office in January. What's your favorite part about being in public office? I think um, it's actually the constituent services still to this day. I love to be able to see that we can provide access to government. On November 16, New made history. She became the first Asian American assembly member to represent District 65, which includes the financial district, South Street Streetport, Battery Park City, and Chinatown, where 40% of the population is Asian. She's also the first APA to represent Manhattan in the assembly. But elected office wasn't always the goal. We met New two years ago when she served as chief of staff for assembly member Ron Kim the first Korean-American in the state legislature, and at the time, the only Asian serving in the assembly. With Ron being the only Asian-American elected on the entire state level, I felt like we really needed to have much more representation, and it was a big driver for me to really think about how little voice um, our Asian-American communities have in government. And there just happened to be a seat open in the district where she lived. Longtime assembly member and Speaker of the House Sheldon Silver was forced to step down when he was arrested and later convicted on federal corruption charges. An appeals court recently overturned that conviction. New was encouraged to run by her mentors, but she lost the special election. Instead of throwing in the towel, she ran in the Democratic primary and won beating out four candidates. She later won the general election in November with 76% of the vote. She found herself in the spotlight, even featured in Vogue magazine. But behind the scenes, she said the campaign was tough and an eye-opener for her. She found her gender was a topic of many conversations with voters and in political circles. We get a lot of the uh, you're to this, you're to that. You know, that's something that's very, very prevalent in having a woman of color running for office. You see people saying, you know, oh, your hair's too long, your hair's too short, your skirt's too long, your skirt's too short, your heels are too high, you're not wearing heels enough, you're not smiling enough, you smile too much. You know, it just, you're either to this or to that. And I think that um, that's one of the challenges of running as a woman and as a woman of color especially. She points out that she has 16 years experience in state politics. New was also surprised with some of the racism she encountered. My mom and my dad, like they came to help me with the campaign and um, there were people who like shouted at them and said, you know, go back where you came from, this is not your country and things like that. And I was just kind of startled, like we're living in a democratic district in, in New York City. You know, and, and these were still things that people were saying. Nu was born in Taiwan and immigrated to the U.S. when her father received a scholarship to attend the University of Idaho. They later moved to Texas, Oregon, then Washington State, where Nu attended college. Moving from town to town, they were usually one of the few Asian faces, and her family faced isolation and discrimination. I knew that I was angry at a lot of things. <laughs> I knew that I wanted to advocate on behalf of the community in some way. And I felt like if I knew how government worked, then I could go and wreak havoc and change it somehow. After college, she moved to New York to get her master's at Baruch. Then she settled into life in public service and thought she'd stay behind the scenes. I think that so often women, and especially women of color, self-select out. Uh, we often think that, you know, somebody else will do, you know, better. According to the Center for American Women and Politics, in 2017, 6% of the more than 7,000 state legislatures in the country were women of color. And these new legislatures are bringing a new voice to government. News, an outspoken champion of immigrants, including protecting dreamers, the undocumented children of immigrants and she sponsored a bill to disaggregate AAPI data. 
Asian Americans are the fastest growing minority group in our state. We also have more Asian Americans living in poverty in New York City than any other minority group. Asian Americans make up almost 10% of the state's population, 14% in New York City, but the community receives less than 1% of city services. Um, this is something that will make it so that we know which languages that the agency should be using when servicing our Asian American populations. We are not one monolithic group. And she's also become an inspiration to young people who now see a reflection of themselves in government. In the last uh, year, we've had over 80 uh, young people volunteer in our office. So, you know, I think that just having a little bit of a perspective on how government works, I think that every single person who comes out of our program also can feel like they impacted government. And I'm proud to say that so many of them decided to go into public service after their experience here. For Asian American Life, I'm Ernabel DeMillo.